All right, look. Today, Joe Shane came out and spoke to the media. All right, he had a presser, and then he went on the Giants YouTube channel, and he did a Q&A to some calls. And, you know, I just want to go over some of the things that he spoke about today. So, let's get Saquon Barkley out the way. I mean, I think Joe Shane is resigned to the fact that Saquon might leave. But it, but I really feel like Saquon, like I told you, I think he's going to stay. Because it's just too much competition out there. I don't think Saquon's market is what he thinks it is with Derrick Henry is out there. Eckler's out there. Josh Jacobs is out there. Tony Pollard is out there. Saquon don't got the resume of none of these cats. So when I look at it, I'm like, you know what? There's a good chance that Saquon might just come back home to New York, get his PR team to type up some sentimental shit, and make it seem like he's a giant for life and he was never going to leave. You know, the, the whole Saquon Barkley PR spin, he's good at that. So I actually expect Saquon Barkley to come back. I don't think Joe Shane needs to tag Saquon. I don't think he plans on tagging Saquon. I think Joe Shane is going to let Saquon get a reality check and then bring him back to New York. So I fully expect Saquon Barkley to remain a giant. I said it, what, two weeks ago when I did a Saquon Barkley video? Uh, yeah, I want to say at least a week or two ago, I, I said I don't think he's leaving. I think he's going to take what Joe Shane gives him. You know, that I stand by that. As far as Xavier McKinney goes, they haven't even begun negotiating yet. We're going to see if he puts a transition tag on him so he has an opportunity to match for, for Xavier McKinney. But I really feel like Joe Shane, I could be wrong, but I think he's just – a piece of him just wants to play, just wants to start over. Not start over, but build through the draft. And supplement through free agency, kind of like he said. I just think he's not running. He's not running to the. He's not running to the bank to resign Gettleman players. That's really what I'm trying to say. I don't think he's gonna run to the bank to resign McKinney, resign Saquon Barkley. I think Joe Shane at this point kind of wants to build the team in his image. That's what I'm getting. That's where I really feel like he wants to just build the team. Instead of having to go through all these headaches with all these Gettleman players, Andrew Thomas, Dexter Lawrence, Daniel Jones had to take care of them last year. Now this year you got Xavier McKinney won his bag. And now Saquon Barkley wants his bag, still wants his bag. I just think Joe Shane wants a, his team. How many of these Gettleman players are going to hold Joe Shane hostage? Like how many of these Gettleman players are going to get these contracts from Joe Shane? You know, at some point Joe Shane has to say, I can redraft you. I can replace you. I can bring in a free agent like Akira K. I can make this work. At what point does he start to feel like that? And we'll see. You know, like, so now we got the situation with the quarterback and Daniel Jones. So he basically said he's comfortable with Daniel Jones. He believes in Daniel Jones. He said all the cliche things. But my retort to Joe Shane is this. Because a caller, a caller said, it sounded like somebody in my comment section. I ain't even going to lie to you. So a caller came in and ripped. He ripped Daniel Jones to shreds in front of Joe Shane. Because Joe Shane kept talking about, okay, so let me tell you what happened. So, they asked Joe Shane about Daniel Jones, can you win with him? Like, they said, you saw Lamar, like, the, the, the two hosts. This is on the YouTube live stream. They said, Joe Shane, you saw what Patrick Mahomes did. You saw what Josh Allen and Lamar did. It's almost impossible to win in this league without a, a, an elite quarterback. How do you feel about that? Do you agree with that? And Joe Shane essentially said, That Daniel Jones played at that elite level versus Minnesota. Joe Shane came out and said, yeah, we had our elite guy on the road in Minnesota in the playoff game. So Daniel Jones has that in him. We just got to keep it, you know, so we just got to keep it consistent. But he basically admitted to what I have been saying 
the old, the whole offseason last year that, yo, Daniel Jones has it in him to be that guy. That Minnesota playoff game ain't no damn flu. Like, Daniel Jones has it in him to be that dude. He just don't do it on a consistent basis. Whether it's injuries, lack of confidence, lack of production around. I don't know what. He just don't bring it out on a consistent basis. So then a caller calls in and says, listen, I get it, the Minnesota game. But he says, what about the other 40, 50 games where he stunk? And I was like, oh, shit. Like, the callers just had no mercy on Joe Shane. He was like, yo, I get he won that role playoff game. What about the other games where he sucked and was inconsistent? And then, you know, he put Joe Shane on the spot. And then Joe Shane was like, look, man, I got to do a better job of putting talent around him. And Joe Shane gave cliche answers, but damn. Like, shout out to that caller. Like, that caller was with the shits. And it's, and it's low-key true because the problem with Daniel Jones is – we don't get that Minnesota playoff game on a weekly basis. And if you at some point you have to be fed up. At some point you got to be fed up. And even I'm to a point with Daniel Jones. It's like, yo, I'm tired of waiting, man. I'm tired of waiting. Like, I can't unsee the first six weeks of the season. We have one of the worst offenses in, in modern football history. Like, I can't unsee that. The guy gets a $40 million contract and turned into a pumpkin. I can't unsee that, man. So, like, I'm conflicted on drafting a quarterback at six. I'm conflicted on drafting a quarterback at six because I don't want another Daniel Jones. I don't want to force a quarterback in a spot that he ain't supposed to be picked at. So, as bad as I do want a quarterback, y'all know I want the future of the franchise. I'm not sure we should do that at six. It really probably should be neighbors. Joe Alt. No, I don't want Joe Alt. No, we can't do that. It's got to be neighbors. Neighbors has probably got to be the pick at six. That's really where I'm starting to lean. We got to get the uh, LSU kid at six. That's where I'm starting to lean at right now. But, I mean, we'll see. But I'm really starting to lean towards getting that guy. That's where I'm leaning. But at the end of the day, we'll see. We'll see how Joe Shane plays everything. But I fully expect Saquon to be back. I, and, I, and I know we're drafting a quarterback in the top two rounds. We're not leaving day one without a quarterback. I think he'll trade. He got two number twos. He could trade up with a team like Green Bay for their first round pick that's way late in the 20s. And he can give up his two say like. There's ways for Joe Shane to go back and get his quarterback. It just don't. It doesn't have to be a six. Joe Shane could trade back into the first round, get Penix, get Knicks, and, you know, later in the first round. So, either way, I'm going to trust the guy. You know what I'm saying? This is his job on the line, too. So, we're going to see how this play out. But anyway, that's it. That's all. Throw those FUs in the chat if you're rocking with me. My name is Fist Vegas, and I approve this message.